and welcome into To Your Health. The month of March is National Problem Gambling Awareness Month. And you might say, well, why is that? Because the big thing that happens in March, March Madness. And a lot of money is spent and lost in gambling on the basketball games in March Madness. And you may say, well, these people just don't have any willpower. Well, it's a little bit more than that. So we brought to us Dr. Will Rutland, and you are a psychiatrist. That's exactly right. So I am a, a psychiatrist by training, and then I did specialty training in addiction psychiatry. Uh -huh. And so compulsive behaviors of all sorts, including compulsive gambling, yes. are near and dear to my heart. Yes, and just it was just about, I think, eight years ago that they did designate it, along with drugs, alcohol, and everything else, that gambling is an addictive behavior. That's exactly right. And it's because it works on the brain in yes. nearly the exact same way as alcohol or drugs do. You know, there is specific circuitry involved in addiction, and um, that circuitry lights up in the brain of someone who has a gambling addiction, mm -hmm. just like it does in somebody who has, say, a drug addiction. Yeah. Um, and we learn, too, a lot of times is they say, well, it's all about the money. No. Well, no. Yes and no. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you're, gonna lose, you're gonna lose all your money, well, but it's fair. There is that. Um, yes. You know, so um, it's, it's really a problem of chemistry at yes. its root. And uh, you know, I don't wanna bore you too much with this, but kind of the way that I think about it is a war between the back of our brain, where we house a lot of our emotional components, mm -hmm. our emotional brain, and the front of our brain, which is where we have our executive function. So we think about those structures as uh, parts of the brain like the uh, amygdala, which is our emotional center, mm -hmm. the hippocampus, which is our memory center, mm -hmm. and then there's a little place called the nucleus accumbens. Now, you don't have to remember any of that. <laughs> We're not going to be tested. No, no test no. at the end of this, I promise. But the nucleus accumbens is the clearinghouse for dopamine. Now, uh, you might have heard of dopamine we, I mean, before. I think yeah. everybody's heard a little bit yeah, about, a little yeah. bit about dopamine. Yeah. So dopamine is this incredibly important chemical in the brain, and it often motivates our behaviors. Mm -hmm. So a circuit between our emotional center, our memory center, and our dopamine center drive addictive behavior. Mm -hmm. Now, that circuit is supposed to run through the front of our brain, which is where we have our executive center. So that's mm -hmm. where we do our rational thinking. So for instance, make the decision. That's right. That's right. So that's where we might say, oh, look, uh, I have this urge to gamble, this emotional need to gamble. Mm -hmm. But the front part of our brain should step in and say, wait a second, you got to make your rent. You yes. got to pay for all of your necessaries mm -hmm. in life. That's not the best decision. And this is what we think of as the rational brain stepping in. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in addictive behaviors, the impulse from the emotional brain wears out the front of the brain, and then that circuit just runs wild. Mm -hmm. And in kind of progressive or progressed addictive behavior, that emotional brain has started to co-opt the front of the mm -hmm. brain, that executive center. So this is where we get to decisions like, um, you know, I want to buy this scratcher ticket, or I want to go bet yes. on the dogs. Yes. And then the executive part mm -hmm. of the brain has been co-opted to the point that it'll say, well, you can afford to do that just for a few minutes, or you won't be late for that family function if you just stay for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. or, well, you've got that extra $50 in your bank account, maybe you'll just spend that. Mm -hmm. And so then all of a sudden your rational brain is rationalizing your behavior. Once you progress to that point, there's it's sort of Katie bar the doors. Um, we can imagine. It's just gonna keep on running. And so that's where folks like me step in and try and help. Mm -hmm. And of course, problem gambling, we call it a hidden disease. Sure. Because obviously for about $16, you can buy a big bottle of booze sure. and get drunk. Yep. And for, I don't know how much money drugs cost, but eventually you just kind of wear out. Yep. But in gambling, it's not over till the pockets are empty. That's exactly right. And it tends to run all the way because once that circuit is running, you know, sort of wild, it's not gonna ever stop until there's no more fuel in the system. And so you're mm -hmm. gonna get all the way to totally spent um, before you're able to pull yourself back or someone reaches out to help you get back. And that's what it often takes is um, someone reaching out, a loved one, a family member, and a professional that can help break that circuit mm -hmm. down. And if it's happening, what our viewers need to know. Of course, in the state of Alabama, there is a compulsive gambling organization, mm. and you can dial the number 211 yep. 24 hours a day and say, I've got help, and we can connect you with a counselor, Good. but sometimes it's gonna take more. That's too true. You know, um, 
There are medications that can be helpful. Mm -hmm. There are psychotherapies that can be helpful. There are even community programs. Um, you know, there is a Gamblers Anonymous. Um, yes. There are other uh, resources out there, like um, there's something called Smart Recovery. Um, that's an online sort of community of folks mm -hmm. that can be helpful. Um, even individual psychotherapists that sort of practice in this area. And we have those around. Um, and then, of course, folks like me can oftentimes help uh, our patients figure out exactly what constellation of those different solutions work best for them. Mm -hmm. So we'll try and put together a comprehensive treatment plan between medication and therapy and supports, and that can work. That's the best way to do it. That's exactly Absolutely. right. Absolutely. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, listen, thank you. Especially, first and foremost, thank you for coming back to Montgomery. Of course. This is a Montgomery young man that went away, went to Yale, and decided, well, let me try the big things. And, <laughs> and his love is for his home. That's exactly And that's right. exactly what we need more of. And we appreciate you doing that. And just remember this, help is there. Gambling is rampant, especially on that cell phone. You mm -hmm. can bet your house, your life, and your savings away. We'll be right back right after this.